Hey, what's up everybody? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. Gonna try something different today. I'll be outlining my Sonos wishlist for 2021 and beyond. This video is not sponsored. I have no inside information, but I do have an active imagination. Sonos' future is nothing but doom and gloom unless they do all the stuff I'm gonna talk about. Home theater. Let's start with the low hanging fruit. Add support for DTS, in particular DTS Master Audio HD and DTSX. No one is looking to throw in a Blu-ray and listen to a silent movie. DTS doesn't sound very good on Sonos. Adding this codec would eliminate one big excuse for the haters to dismiss Sonos, enabling them to play 99% of their physical media as opposed to just 50%. Just add DTS to the party. Support the Dolby LPCM DTS Home Theater Audio Holy Trinity. Next, make surrounds real surrounds, like yesterday. Hold up, Never Enough Tech has been spreading fake news about the surrounds in the last few videos. Let's correct that dummy. And then we'll go back to the wish list. but you probably wanna stick around for this. So here's the bottom line. All Sonos Home Theater systems max out at 5.x. The beam behaves as you would expect, a 3.0 bar that is converted into a 5.0 system when you add two surrounds. Easy enough. The ARC, a 5.0.2 speaker, converts into a 5.0.2 system when you add surrounds. Same deal with the play bar, but without the upward firing speakers. Anyway, as I mentioned, five ear level channels is your ceiling. Adding two surrounds to the ARC does not get you a sixth and seventh channel. Why would you ever think that other than that's how it works with every other system? In previous videos, I've been classifying the surrounds as not real channels, rather proprietary ambient noisemakers. Blame tech support. Anyway, thought I would check back with tech support as there seems to be a great deal of confusion on this still. As of a few days ago, both reps claim the surrounds actually do present true fourth and fifth channels after a lot of probing. So to the best of my understanding, keeping in mind certainty does not seem to be achievable talking to tech support, the ARC, when the surrounds are added, is downmixed to a 3.0.2 speaker, combining the directional channels to present a more robust left and right jumbo channel, leaving the surrounds to be the true and only surround channels. If the ARC can really only handle up to a 5.x system, 7 is just too much, we are not going to enjoy 7.1 content in its full form, Lame, and 3D audio will not be as glorious. Okay, my wish item. Sonos, provide an update of some kind that gives us our seven channels. You have the speakers in your soundbar system to support this. Make the haters job a little more difficult. And maybe release some official documentation on this matter. Stop being so incredibly cagey. Just a reminder, Sonos official ceiling on channels is a 5.2.2 with the ARC system as dual sub support was added back in December, 2020. We'll ignore the snobs that say two subs are still just one channel because they play the same audio. Next, Sonos needs to really embrace 3D audio, which seems to be much more popular than 3D video, by developing surrounds with upward firing speakers to complement the arc. I'm not saying that these imaginary speakers should replace the Sonos ones, but maybe Sonos can add a variant, a One Plus or a One Theater. I'm sure both of these names are off-brand. Doing this could really boost the 3D effect that is lacking a bit with the ARC system. I will freely admit that upward firing speakers are not necessary for noticeable height effects, but having them in the front and back, I believe, really helps you get there without the extreme EQing that can have a harshening effect on the overall sound. So what do we end up with? A 7.2.4 Sonos Home Theater system. I'd review that. It sounds very appealing and maybe not completely out of the realm of possibility over the next few years. Okay, I think I covered my most obvious home theater once. Moving on, gonna stick with home theater, but move away from soundbars and travel further out on the limb. Sonos, at least hardware-wise, seems well poised to allow us to disassemble the soundbar and spread it out like a proper home theater system. What am I talking about here? Well, at the very least, make it easy for us to take two Play Ones and make them a simple left-right 2.0 channel system. Yes, yes, I know this is technically possible with a Sonos port, but that more than doubles the price of the rig, bringing the total cost to around $800, which, uh, no. Instead, I suggest they release a modified Play One that has an optical input and allows it to pair with another Play One. Give the powered bookshelf crew a sizable group 
a reason to smile in your direction with an appealing starting price. A more compelling case in the same vein would be allowing you to take a play five and multiple play ones and spread them in front of you, generating a proper 3.0 system. Okay, throw on a sub or two for a 3.2. Maybe you place two speakers behind you for a nice seven piece 5.2 channel system. This setup I think could sound really good and would appeal to those that are seeking long-standing home theater fundamentals. The play five or something like that as the center channel and ones or fives as dedicated left and right channels would give you much more fidelity from the front channels and a much clearer and wider soundstage. Admittedly, all this is easy for me to say because I don't have to create the software or hardware to support, but on a surface level, I could see my idea working kinda like this. An ER connection right into a Play 5 and having it act as a home theater port of sorts that manages up to 5.2 channels and directs the remaining speakers in the group. Alternatively, maybe Sonos releases a specialized port that connects to the TV and then that thing sends out the orders to the other speakers. Bottom line, the ask here is to allow consumers to convert a group of existing single channel speakers to a traditional home theater setup that act as a single coordinated unit, much like the soundbar systems. Some people like their speakers to be free, not all smushed in a bar. Sonos business people, you can still sell the traditional port for those powered bookshelf speakers or for capturing your turntable audio and the amp for those passive speakers you still love to listen to. I don't think my proposal really will create that much cannibalization and quite honestly could move a lot of units out the door. Pushing a little further, if Sonos wanted to make even bigger, meatier single channel speakers for home theater purposes, I wouldn't complain. Not holding my breath, but fun to think about. And in FYI, this setup I discussed, a bunch of wireless powered single channel speakers doing the home audio gig, is already happening with WISA enabled systems. Systems you can buy now ranging from the cost of a Sonos Arc to the Sennheiser Ambio. So a little heat on Sonos's tail if the Weiss speaker model takes off, which I really hope it does. I want Sonos to stay paranoid. A few more miscellaneous items and my opinions on them. I'll say it, call me what you will. I don't think Sonos needs to support Bluetooth for their in-home devices. I like the idea that sound is not cut out when you walk away. Instead, I suggest they expand their Wi-Fi streaming options to include Google Chromecast. That would cover a lot of those left out Android folks and support their current standard in audio quality. Maybe even better audio quality than AirPlay 2. Maybe it's my imagination, but I swear I've heard Chromecast sounding better on some soundbars than AirPlay 2. Pass through ports on soundbars. I'm torn on this, could go either way. Maybe Sonos could add at least one pass through on the Arc or some mid-cycle upgrade to erase the pain of those without an eARC TV? eARC TVs are still fairly new, so we have lots of incompatible TVs out there acting as blockers to pristine, uncompressed audio. While this ad would be helpful in listening to your Blu-rays in their full glory, I will throw some understanding, sympathy, Sonos's way. eARC TVs are coming hard, so perhaps a critical volume of customers will have them as their primary in two to three years. So this doesn't really excuse them not including them in the initial release, but it's a rationale why they would not add it in a follow-up. I don't have the numbers, but maybe the majority of Sonos customers are streamers and don't bother with physical media. And Sonos is strategically shaping their products largely for that group. And not to be forgotten, adding inputs increases complexity. So, hmm, is this device connected to the TV or the bar? Where do I change inputs? Where is the remote? How do I switch inputs on the app again? Sonos is not about that fussing around with multiple inputs game. They are disciplined for better or worse. So if they do this, which they probably won't, they would need to be very careful to have a good takeover flow so the user remains unburdened. The device the customer wants to use needs to magically be the sound they hear. If Sonos can't keep this seamless, don't add the pass-through. Fly away, sweet bird. I think there are some intellectual property roadblocks, but Sonos, aim for 24-bit streaming from music services and get that MQA rating. I know, I know, I know, hardly anyone can hear the difference between 16 and 24-bit, but it makes those who are paying more to delude themselves that they can hear the difference feel better knowing they can honestly pretend to hear the difference. You know, to show off for their uninterested spouses and friends. Get on it, Sonos. The last thing, a product idea, and boy is this a fairly common product at this point that would be beneficial for both music and home theater folks. A 360 or maybe just a 270 degree speaker, make it three to $400 and beefier than the Sonos ones. 
I mean, the ones already kind of largely look like they should be 360 speakers. So I'm sure you can find the right look. Steal some of that shine from Amazon, Apple, and Bose. Give the kids that middle of the room party speaker. Give us a way to enjoy Atmos music, maybe with a stereo pair, or use it to exaggerate spatial effects if used as rear speakers. Give the new 360 product that upward firing speaker. Okay, anyway, running out of spitballs. I'm wrapping this up. Tell me what you want Sonos to do in 2021 and beyond. Call out my awesome and dumb ideas. If you have the energy, make this video and my channel more popular if this video did it for you. Catch you on the next one.